So this is um, the microscopy for the digestive system. And there's um, four slides now here, all normal stuff. Okay, no diseases for this. So let me show you again uh, what's going on here. All right. Um, all right. What you're looking at here is a lumen. All right. This is a lumen over here. So therefore, this part here is the lining of the lumen. So this is epithelial tissue. Okay. So let's look up close. You'll also find over here a connective tissue and then going into muscular tissue. We learned all about that in A and P1. But let's um, let's look at closer to the and that was at 40x. All right. Let's get up closer to this. Now we're going to get to 100 times for magnification. Okay. And what you got here? This is all epithelium. A lot of layers. What do you think this is? What type of epithelium? Yeah. This is pretty classic. This is um, stratified squamous epithelium. The way we define uh, stratified epithelium, um, you know, is it stratified squamous, is it stratified columnar, is it stratified cuboidal? If you know that there's a lot of layers, you know it's stratified, but you look at the uppermost layer. The uppermost layer is going to tell you what type of stratified epithelium that is. So, let me show you. Now, I would never really give it to you at this uh, magnification, at least this particular um, organ, but let me just show you what's going on here. All right, a lot of layers, this is all the epithelium, much closer, so it's hard to uh, uh, visualize what's going on, but yeah, that's... Stratified, okay, a lot of layers. But the uppermost layer, see how thin that is? Look at that, that's one cell right there. It's coming off, you can see these other cells that came off, they're very thin. So you know that this is stratified because the uppermost layer is very thin and it's stratified squamous. Should those upper layers, if they're attached over here, of course, but if they were like cubes, then we say it's stratified cuboidal. If it's columns, of course, then we say it's uh, a stratified columna. But that's stratified squamous, okay? What kind of organs would you find in stratified squamous? Skin, right. Skin is a, uh, you learned that from AMP1. Skin is pretty classic. Um, what's the function of, uh, of stratified squamous? Yeah, protection. In one word, you wouldn't expect this epithelium to be put in, um, in your lungs, because like I showed you before, you're not going to have good gas exchange going through here, right? Look at that, sorry. All right? Or you should learn that anyway from A and P1. If oxygen needs to go from here over to here, you're not going to expect it to have many layers, because then the oxygen has to pass through all this area just to come over here. It's not suited for that, okay? So you don't expect any kind of gas exchange or diffusion to really take place in stratified squamous. However, you do expect protection. If this is on your skin, you would want that there. You don't want simple squamous epithelium to be on your skin. You touch something hot, immediately it goes on into the underlying tissues. Because there's only one layer there that's thin. When you have many layers here, then yeah, it makes sense that that's going to protect you touch something hot on your skin, it has to pass through all those layers to get to the underlying layers. Okay? So, um, so in one word, the function for stratified squamous, for function, is protection. So why am I showing you this if it's digestive? And the skin is not part of the digestive system. No, but the esophagus is. Okay? When you drink hot liquids or cold liquids, you don't want to have your esophagus to be having one layer so that it's going to burn right through there to get the underlying tissues, like your, your uh, connective tissues and muscles and whatnot. 
muscle, your, your esophagus is going to have many layers here. It's going to be stratified splenius. Okay? And that's really all you have to worry about in terms of microscopy for the esophagus. Okay? Any questions about that? Okay. Let's do our next one. So this is, whoops, sorry, of course I just ruined it. <laughs> um, so this is at 40x, and you can already pick out a few things here, some features, okay? Um, first off, you can see it's going, it's like making these folds. Right? Keep an eye on that. I'll get back to that. You also notice that, from what I usually notice, let me get up just a tap, that's 40x. Let me just get up a little bit closer. And you notice that the lining here is almost looking like a saw tooth, right? Like a saw. <laughs> All right, so you have this like sawtooth pattern. That tells me where we're in, only because I've seen a lot of these. But that means when I see sawtooth, I know there's only one thing. But let's get up closer to the sawtooth pattern to see what we're actually looking at over here to put in perspective. All right, I'm going to bring it now to 400x. Here, there's a sawtooth, right? It's going in and in and in and here. But what you're looking at over here is a certain thing that's going to help you out, especially when you do lecture. What you got here is this. Kind of shaped like this. Okay. What we're looking at is, well, what organ we're in is the stomach. And this structure that I'm pointing at right here, all right, this, this, this one's more classic, but this is what we call a gastric pit. Now, from the stomach all the way down until the end of the colon, the epithelium is no longer stratified squamous, but is now a uh, simple columnar epithelium. And if you look at really close, you'll be able to appreciate a little bit over here, okay? So we have simple columnar epithelium. So we have, and I'll just draw very quickly over here, simple columnar epithelium. And they're very long, there's only one layer there. The nucleus is usually pushed down to the base of each one of these cells. And around the neck, that's what we call the bottleneck over here, around the neck area, we also have cells that are called goblet cells. What do goblet cells secrete? Mucus, okay? They're pretty classic what they are. Since there's a lot of mucus inside here, uh, it repels stain. So they're usually not stained very well. They look like little, uh, little white balls. I, look, I call them Casper the Friendly Ghost. And that's basically what they are. They need a special stain to do that, okay? And it releases mucus. And that's what you're seeing mainly here in this white area. This is all mucus that's uh, located in the gastric pits. 
But then there's also going to be a bunch of other cells, which I'm not going to go into with the microscopy. Look at the lecture portion. But what's happening is you have things like chief cells over here. All right? Chief cells. You're going to have also um, parietal cells. I'm trying to see what colors I can use. Parietal cells over here releases hydrochloric acid. Okay? And pepsin. All right? And what's going to happen is these cells over here are going to secrete a bunch of different things. So you're going to have like hydrochloric acid going in here. You're going to have pepsin over here. You're going to have mucus coming out into this area over here. It's going to all mix in these areas over here. Okay? And when it does, you got an intrinsic factor also that's going here. When it does, it's going to mix it all in here, and then it's going to spew it out into the lumen of the stomach basically how gastric pits are. They're lined with a lot of secreting different, uh, different secreting uh, cells, whether mucus, hydrochloric acid, intrinsic factor, pepsin to break down uh, proteins. It's going to put that all in here, and then it's going to spill them out into the lumen of the stomach. And that's what the gastric pits are basically doing. Okay? Um, there's thousands and thousands of gastric pits in your stomach. Okay? And that's what's happening there. All right? So that's at uh, 400x. All right? Let's go back. This is at 100x. Okay? You can see the sawtooth, which are actually little gastric pits that's causing the sawtooth uh, uh, appearance there. Okay? Um, I just want to show you one more thing about the stomach, and then we'll move on to the next slide. Um, remember, going back to this, where I wanted to show you that it has these folds going on. See that? On a more macroscopic, not micro, but macroscopic level. That's Brugge. Those are the folds in your stomach. Okay, Ruge, R-U-G-A-E, right? That allows your stomach to have these folds. If it's these folds, then when food goes in your stomach, the folds go away. It allows the stomach to distend even bigger. Okay, so that's what's happening there. All right, questions on the stomach? All right, good. Let's go to the next one. here is finger-like projections. See that? So you've got finger-like projections coming up. Okay? What you're looking at here is what? What are those structures called? That's villi. And where, what organ are we in? The small intestines. All right? So any of those three parts of the small intestines, the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. For microscopy, just call the small intestines and call it a day. For lecture, you need to know what's going on. Okay? Now, that's what's happening here, is that you have these little finger-like projections. Let's get up closer to it. They're called villi. And what's the function of the small intestines? I mean, what's its main function? Yeah, absorption. And one word, absorption. That's what goes on in the small intestines. So we're going to do everything we can to increase the surface area so that we could have the most efficient absorption factory happening. Okay? And that's what's happening over here. So that's a villi that's going on here. Or, or villus. The villus over here. But let's get up closer to it. Now we're going to go up to 400 power.
So that's a villus. Okay. Um, the picture there. All right. So this is a villus, and what you're seeing. Let me erase this for a moment. seeing here is this, right? We've got this villus. And we have a uh, simple columnar epithelium. Alright? The, the That's a simple columnar cell. Very long. The nucleus itself, the dark nucleus, is kind of pushed down to the base, a basal area of the cell. But all of that, those are all simple columnar epitheliums. Or, uh, I'm sorry, the simple columnar cells in the epitheliums. Remember what I said? Stomach all the way down is going to be lined with simple columnar epithelium. You also have tons of goblet cells. As we get closer to the colon, which we'll be talking soon. We're going to have lots of uh, um, goblet cells there. These goblet cells, they don't stain very well, as I explained, because they're filled with mucus and they kind of repel stains. But we have these little Casper the Friendly Ghosts, the goblet cells, and those are going to release or secrete uh, mucus, okay? Which is going to help with uh, digestion. And also, uh, the mucus that comes out of this is more of an alkaline, uh, uh, um, alkaline base to it. So it'll. Um, neutralize the hydrochloric acid or the, uh, the very acidic uh, food or chyme that's coming out of the stomach because it was loaded with hydrochloric acid there. So, um, so that's what's happening there. The other thing is that these villi are going to have microvilli coming out of it. Now I'm just drawing it bigger so you can see it, but I'm not drawing it to scale. It'll be much smaller than this. But that's microvilli that's all coming out of here. Okay? So this is the reason why we have this. We can have absorption happening here and happening here and happening here. But we can also have absorption happening here and here. We're increasing the surface area astronomically by having just not just the villus or the villi, but also the microvilli. The best way I can explain what this is, is that think of a rug. You have a rug where you have those bristles coming up. Those are your villi. And then you look at it really close, you see hairs coming out of them, right? That's your microvilli. And that's what you got to say. It's, and the purpose of the villi and the microvilli is to increase surface area so that we get a massive amount of absorption happening in this organ. Now, unfortunately, you can't see the microvilli with our light microscopes that we have here at the college. Okay? You really need to uh, get yourself your, on, um, your hands on an electron microscope, which makes things, you can see things much more closely. But you can't see that. Instead, what you're going to see, and I don't know if you can see it well on this, um, this video here, but you can see a darker pink line all going over this. There's a dark pink line over here. That dark pink line is the microvilli, but it has a special name. It looks like a nice dark pink border around here. We call it the brush border. So the brush border is found in the small intestines and is composed of microvilli. A lot of students off to the side, just to let you know, a lot of students think that it's silly of it. Cilia is not a part of the small intestines, okay? It's really not a part of any of the digestive system. People think that cilia and microvilli, well, they weren't the same. They're totally different structures. Microvilli just sit there. Cilia move and sweep, right? You can see cilia, as I showed you, with the trachea, that kind of thing, all right? Sweep that uh, mucus up. So the dark pink border around here is called the brush border. It contains microvilli. Okay, 
And what happens here, after all the absorption of all the digestive um, products that you make from proteins and carbohydrates and stuff, what's found in the villus is going to be capillaries. So when the absorption happens, it's going to go into the capillaries of the villi. Now, remember, carbohydrates and uh, amino acids, uh, which were once proteins, they're going to be able to get right into the bloodstream, and they go into the bloodstream that way. Um, however, fats are a different problem. Fats are going to have problems because they're too big to get into the blood vessels. So we're going to have another set of vessels also located in the villi that are going to absorb the fats. What are those called? Remember? They're also modified lymphatics. Yes, lacteals. Lacteals are going to absorb the fats, whereas the capillaries are going to absorb uh, the amino acids from proteins and the carbohydrates, right? Specifically, the monosaturides, the simpler forms of, of sugar. Okay? So that's our small intestines. Questions about that? Okay. All right, let's look at our last one over here. So this is at 40 eggs. This is the colon, all right, just because it's pretty obvious we've done the esophagus, we've done the stomach, and now we did the uh, small intestine. So this is the colon, also known as the colon is the same thing as the large intestines. Okay? And what you've got here, again, is going to have simple columnar epithelium, as much as we saw with the small intestines and the stomach. I'll get up close so you can see it. But the other thing you're going to see are all, and I don't think you can see here, I'll get up closer, but all these white balls. There's tons and tons of these white balls. In fact, they have these crypts of white balls going. Those, yes, those are your goblet cells. And in the goal, and in the colon, there's going to be tons and tons of goblet cells. In fact, the goblet cells, if you see a lot of them on there, um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, this was that on it. Sorry. Um, that's at 40x. What I showed you before is at 100 not a big thing, but just want to be consistent. But anyway, when you see tons and tons of goblet cells, you know you're in the colon. Okay? Fix this color up. Okay. This is at 400 X. got over here, simple columnar epithelium, that's one cell right there. There's the nucleus of the cell, that's a simple columnar cell, all over here. You also see the wonderful goblet cells all around here, filled with mucus. But there are, as I said before, tons and tons of these goblet cells going deep down. Look at them all. Look at them all, the goblet cells. So the purpose of the goblet cells in this case is that it's going to, see, by the time the food, kind, feces, gets down to the, the colon, it's already absorbed quite a bit of the water. So now the feces is extremely dry, and it's going to have a hard time to actually move from one part of the large intestines to the next because it's so dry. So we need some form of lubrication to get it going, to move it forward with the peristalsis. So the large intestines, it makes sense to have a lot of goblet cells there to add for lubrication so that it can actually 
remove the feces. Now, what I didn't tell you before, the purpose of the, uh, the goblet cells in the, uh, in the stomach is to create a barrier. You see, when the hydrochloric acid comes out of the stomach, it has a, a pH of two. And that means that if you put a drop of hydrochloric acid on your hand, it will come out the other side. It's very, very acidic. It's a very strong acid. So you don't want hydrochloric acid to come in to your stomach and start eating away at your stomach. So we have uh, mucus that's coming out of goblet cells in the stomach that's going to uh, create this barrier between the lumen of your stomach and the wall of your stomach. And that will help it so it doesn't digest your, your, um, your own stomach. So again, uh, that's the goblet cells purpose in the stomach. The purpose of the goblet cells um, in the small intestines is for some lubrication to move the food forward, but it's also there because it's, the um, mucus is an alkaline base, so it's also going to neutralize the acidic food that's going into the, uh, from the stomach going to the small intestines, so you don't eat away at your own um, small intestines either. But the goblet cells in the large intestines is mainly for lubrication because the feces is so darn dry over there, so it needs to use that, okay? So those are our microscope slides of the, um, oops, one of the, there you go. the microscope slides of the digestive system. Okay. Um, so again, the four microscope slides for the digestive system is the esophagus. There's four of them: the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestines and the large intestines, also known as the cold. Okay? Questions on those four slides?